There are always going to be new methods to share selfies or pictures of food with your friends. These ways kind of sucked. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 failed social media platforms. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're focusing on social media sites that may not necessarily be completely defunct or shut down, but they do or did have terrible formatting, scandalous policies, and or simply went nowhere with what they offered. Come on, guys! Brainster, you, you know what I'm talking about! Hey, I, I'm just working tonight, man. Number 10. The Hub. The Hub? Lasting only a few months, The Hub was Walmart's poorly designed store brand like Take on MySpace. Users could upload videos, but more importantly, create wish lists of the Walmart products they so desired. What better gift to give a loved one than the Jackhawk 9000? Available at Walmart. As one would expect, there was a lack of engagement, heavy advertising, and a lot of people asking why. It's hard to determine whether Walmart planned to stick with the network or not, but judging from the timing, it seems like it was nothing more than a marketing ploy for the back to school season. Number 9. Ello. Hello is a service that claims to be free of ads, doesn't enforce a real name policy, and never sells user information. Featuring hashtag functions, a not suitable for work setting, and a bread emoji to like posts for whatever reason, bread makes you fat. Hello arrived on the scene with the potential to knock down competitors. If only it didn't look just like them. At first, Hello had a design similar to Facebook, but it's since morphed into something more resembling Pinterest. While critics have praised its innovation, it's been noted that the lack of popular traction could lead to its downfall. Number 8. Dig Before Reddit, we had Dig, a social news site where users could upvote or downvote articles. Sounds like a good idea on paper, but this led groups to band together to bury certain articles while digging pages with other stories they felt were important, which ultimately led to spamming. And the damn thing is spreading to every computer in the office! <laughs> you think this is funny? Adding to Dig's problems was an encryption key leak in 2007 with a series of article removals thereafter, which caused the community to accuse the network of violating free speech. Meanwhile, with Dig busy ironing out these issues, Facebook and Reddit were rising in popularity, making the website effectively obsolete. Number 7. Diaspora in a world where advertisements pop up almost anywhere, Diaspora had the benefit of refusing to place any kind of ad, much like Ello. You don't want to ruin it with ads because ads aren't cool. Exactly. You might be quick to say sign us up based on that alone, if only it weren't for its shortcomings. The format was practically a carbon copy of Google+, and it didn't provide many basic features that can be found on Facebook. The biggest burden was that you would have to install software on your computer just to use the service, an extra step that caused many to just stick with Facebook. Number 6. Zanga If you want to launch your own social network, take a lesson from Zanga, one of the oldest social networks on this list, and one that is surprisingly still active. You guys are still here. But just wait until you hear about the service it provides. Users can make their own blogs with audio, video, and mini blogs about whatever they want to share. They would like you to blog for them. F me. Must be my trick here, but I thought you said blog. They're the basic features of a social network, but despite their long history, they can't seem to get a moment in the limelight. And how can they when there are more powerful blogging sites like Tumblr? In the end, Zanga just doesn't seem to do anything to really set itself apart. Number 5. Orkut Named after its creator Orkut Bukukten, this platform was Google's first step into social media. That first step, however, was more of a stumble, as the network was littered with worms and authentication issues. Speak to me! Orkut also served as home to several hate campaigns and a harbor to suspected pedophiles, resulting in the company being issued fines and lawsuits. On top of that, there were tons of fake profiles and spam, making it surprising that this platform survived an entire decade. In 2014, Orkut waved the white flag, stating it was shutting down due to the popularity of Facebook, YouTube, Blogger, and Google+. Number 4. Google+. Google's early adventures in the social media space saw the creation of Google Wave, which had a messy and confusing format, and Google Buzz, which suffered from weak privacy policies and resulted in stolen information. Are you guys, I don't know, whatever, data mining? Oh, hells yeah! Then came Google Plus. 
as Google's fourth attempt at social media. This was the most imposing service they launched. YouTubers were forced to make accounts to comment on videos, and if you chose to not release your real name, your account could be suspended. Follow me on Google+. Plus. Just kidding, no one f***ing uses Google Instagram. Changes were eventually made, but the damage had already been done, and the fallout lingers. Meanwhile, celebrity endorsements are unlikely to change anyone's mind about the platform. Number 3. Friendster Come. We live under the subways with the CEO of Friendster. Considered the grandfather of social networks, Friendster was essentially a Facebook prototype. The network could be used for sharing photos and videos, discovering new places and events, and even dating. You're looking to score. I can respect that. It tried keeping up with the trends and features set by Facebook, but by 2011, it gave up that battle and changed to a gaming platform. However, by the time that transition was made, most gamers were comfortably holed up on Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, and Steam. F*** you, where'd you hear that, Friendster? Although Friendster had a foothold in Asia, the writing was on the wall. The company closed its doors in 2015, citing, quote, a lack of engagement by the online community and the failure to keep up with the industry. Number 2. Ping, also known as iTunes Ping. What are you going to ping? In hindsight, was it really a big surprise that iTunes tried to jump on the social media bandwagon? In 2010, Apple Inc. announced it was expanding the iTunes branch with its own social network, Ping. Through the service, users could follow their favorite recording artists as well as friends. You know, like you do on Facebook and Twitter. I'm not on Twitter, I know what you're talking about. Apple eventually realized this, but not until two years had gone by. Pulling the plug on Ping in 2012, Apple offered Facebook and Twitter integration for iTunes in its place. Looking back, integration would have been a better move from the get-go, and it would have saved users from the never-ending spam that followed sign-up. Before we share our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Number 1. MySpace Guys, somebody call a janitor! A 14-year-old girl puked all over the stage! Oh, sorry, that's just MySpace. Before Facebook came into the world, MySpace was the top dog in social media. It retained the status of the largest social networking site in the world for four years, and it helped launch companies like Zynga and RockU. However, after Mark Zuckerberg unleashed his website on the world, it only took a few years for users to unfriend Tom and MySpace to sink into obscurity. Check us out on MySpace. While considered dead by the general public and basically a pop culture punchline, the site is still alive, but it continues to struggle with keeping itself relevant while being overshadowed by Facebook. Don't you use Facebook Connect now? I don't want to talk about it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.